Good evening and welcome to the Township Committee of March 27th, uh, 2018 meeting. Ms. Bork, please call the roll. Commander Murchett. Here. Commander Mandel Here. Commander Mansarachi. Here. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Here. Mayor McCauley. Here. Administrator Ferreira. Uh, and Attorney Willard. Here. Thank you. Would you please join me in a salute to the flag? Meeting Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975. That notice of this meeting was made by the posting on the bulletin board of the Hillsborough Township Complex and notifying the officially designated newspapers that this meeting would take place at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 on March 27, 2018. And we have approval of minutes this evening. May I have a motion to approve the March 13, 2018 regular session minutes? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the floor on the meeting minutes? Any from the dais? Roll call, please. Mayor Weaver Yes. Mayor Mandelcor. Yes. Mayor Mansarachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Thank you. And we are moving on to reports from committee liaisons, receipt of reports, petitions, or communications tonight. And first this evening is committee member Shep. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the police department. Township Police Department will be participating in a nationwide distracted driving crackdown from April 1st through April 21st. Supplemental patrols will be deployed specifically targeting distracted driving violations. If you have to take a phone call or a text message, you are urged to do by pulling over to the side of the road and not to do it while you're driving. So you drive, you text, you pay. Uh, road closures. Beginning at approximately 9 p.m. on Friday, March 30th, there will be a nightly construction on Route 206 in the vicinity of Mountain View Drive. The nightly construction will continue until approximately about 7 a.m. During this time, motorists should, be, should expect traffic pattern changes and possible delays. Also from the Economic Business Development Commission, the next Hillsborough Business Association Business Social will be Thursday, April 19th at the landing. Purchase tickets, please go to hillsboroughbusiness.org. Again, that's hillsboroughbusiness.org. An update from the credit card committee. Grant applications are now being accepted for nonprofit organizations serving the township youth and seniors to apply for up to a $2,000 grant through the Affinity Hillsborough Rewards Credit Card Program. Please visit the website for more details and also to learn how to secure your own Hillsborough Rewards credit card. For those residents who do not already have a card, this reward card offers you the card user rewards, as well as allocating a percentage to go back into a trust to fund these grants. Up on the screen, you will see some of the recent recipients of the, of the grants. That is all, Mayor. Thank you. Committee Man Delcourt. Thanks, Mayor. A couple items. Um, a reminder mainly for our, our seniors those 16 over um, we do run a mr. fix program through the social services office uh, to help with uh, small home tasks or, or fix the projects or repairs uh, even things as uh, projects such as changing the batteries in your smoke detector so anyone that requires uh, the use of the, of the service uh, it is offered uh, as I said through our social services office please schedule through that office at 369 3880, or you can stop into uh, Health and Social Services uh, in the, uh, here in the administration building. Uh, also, I know the weather doesn't quite feel like it, but uh, our recreation programs are starting to gear up for some of our warmer weather uh, events. Uh, we've got our run around the park scheduled for Sunday morning, April 22nd. Uh, we are still accepting registration for runners and walkers. Um, it's a uh, nice way to kick off sort of the, a lot of the uh, spring soft sports season, and uh, we try to get the parks ready to go for those events. So, um, and the money does go to charity for, that we raise. So hopefully we get some folks out there. Um, we also have registration ongoing for both our summer 
day camps as well as our summer sports camps. Uh, if you want to make sure you have a spot in those, please register today before the camps do hit their capacities. We do have limited space, um, so uh, if you want to register, please make sure you do that today on the Township website or the Recreation website. And also, uh, we are now less than two months away from our annual Memorial Day uh, parade, which is scheduled for Saturday, May the 26th. As usual, the parade kickoff is sometime around 10.30 a.m. Uh, we uh, will also have the, uh, the veterans breakfast uh, in advance of the parade. Uh, so uh, for all our veterans in town, please note the date, and we will be uh, reaching out to make sure that uh, we get everyone there in attendance for that event. Again, that's uh, Memorial Day weekend. That's Saturday, May the 26th. I know it seems a long way away, but uh, it's really only about 60 days, so uh, the weather's coming. That's all, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you. Kim Sirachi. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Kind of going along with Community Mandela Corps spring uh, time theme. Uh, from the building department, <coughs> again, spring has arrived, believe it or not, and it is time for deck and pool installations. So this is the uh, time of the year there will be an influx of applications to the building department. Uh, they will be focusing extra time on these applications, so that hopefully you can get some use of your uh, pool or deck uh, during the se you know, during the season. Um, just make sure that you do obtain any required you know, approvals from zoning and engineering before submitting your application to the building department. And in order to avoid any de uh, delays, it's important to make sure your application is complete prior to submitting. <clears throat> the building department has created you know, handouts to help you go uh, to get you through the process of applying for uh, pools and uh, <clears throat> uh, pool and deck permits. And <clears throat> the handouts and additional information can be found on the Hillsborough Township website uh, in, through the uh, building department. And <clears throat> I always feel free to contact the building department. They're more than happy to walk you through that process. Now from the engineering department, um, <clears throat> asked me to uh, uh, clear up some, uh, I guess, misunderstandings with regards to easements. Um, so <clears throat> first off, the responsibility for maintaining those areas uh, that are designated as easements on residential property is with the homeowner. These types of easements include swales, drainage ditches, streams. Uh, if these areas where the easement is paid, needs a, attention due to a downed tree or blocked or settled surfaces, or surfaces, the maintenance is handled by the property owner. The township does not own easements. Um, the purpose of these easements it exists to allow either utility company access to underground utilities to provide, um, also to provide drainage from uphill areas. The utility company and or the township are only responsible for the underground piping and or wiring. The easement restricts property owners from altering or blocking these drainage flow easement areas. And <clears throat> with regards to um, from uh, Department of Public Works, uh, coming in this Friday e-newsletter will be additional information um, for um, <clears throat> removing or taking your any uh, landscape debris still left over from some of the uh, storms that we've had to the dump, so there will be some uh, information on the hours that the Water Road facility will be open. <coughs> That's all I have here. Thank you. Thank you. Committee Member Shedd forgot something you wanted to say, so. Actually, I had uh, three events that I was able to go to over the weekend. Um, I went to Gigi's Playhouse uh, Gallup, and uh, that was a fantastic event.
Easter egg hunt at the football complex. So uh, I just want to announce that. I think it starts at 8 o'clock or something like that. And, um, it's in the Friday evenings. It'll be at the Friday evenings. So uh, just want to let everybody know. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I just want to thank the Hillsborough Elementary School and the HSA Association over there. They invited me to be a guest judge for the science fair. They hooked me up with a great lab coat. Uh, never going to have one of those professionally, so I want to thank them for allowing me to go around and check out all the amazing um, uh, projects that the kids did. There were some really just great things that were done. Uh, we handed out from the Township Committee uh, mayor pins to everyone who participated. So. Uh, on behalf of the Township Committee, I just want to thank them for inviting me and allowing me to be a guest judge at that event. From our finance department, uh, the state of New Jersey has just processed, stay with me here, the 2015 Homestead Benefit Tax Rebate, if that makes sense. We're just catching up now to 2015. Um, so uh, the finance office will be mailing revised 2018 second quarter tax bills to those individuals who receive the credit for their 2015 taxes paid. This year, 2,048 Hillsborough property owners did receive that rebate for a total of $587,782.20. Uh, from our Sustainable Committee, we have a reminder for the Save the Date for the annual Green Living and Wellness Fair. This year, it will be held on Saturday, June 2nd. Uh, please check our e-news for all the details on that event. And last, from our Health Department, March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. And the health department is reminding us uh, that uh, as March is the awareness month, that colon cancer is the large intestine and rectum, and it is the second most deadly cancer of men and women behind lung cancer. Colon cancer can develop over time, and with early detection can be cured. When abnormal growths called polyps are removed early enough, they will not develop into invasive cancer. And please refer to the Township website and the upcoming e-news for more information on that. And please get checked. That is all for me, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick acknowledgement that our freeholder Mark Caligari is joining us here tonight. So hello Mark, nice to see you. And you'll most likely be joining us for proclamations tonight as well. In a few minutes we'll get to those. A few things for me tonight. Just wanted to uh, say congratulations to our top cops this year. Hillsborough Township Police Department continues its program intended to recognize the performance of its top rated officers. The award recip recipients are determined based upon the score obtained from their annual job performance evaluation along with the ranking achieved from their respective supervisors and peers. As a result of their hard work and acknowledgement of the award is placed in the officer's permanent personnel file, and a special award bar is presented to each officer to be worn above his uniform badge. In addition, the officer's names will be engraved on a plaque displayed in the lobby of the police headquarters, memorializing each winner's um, from the year, I think the inception was from 1996. The two officers this year selected for the program are Patrolman Pascal and Patrolman McCarthy. Patrolman Pascal has been a member of the police department since 2001 and has served in both the patrol and investigative divisions. He is the recipient of several command citations and received the department's Medal of Merit in 2003 for capturing carjacking suspects. He also received the MAD Law Enforcement Distinguished Service Award in 2014 for his efforts in enforcing DWI laws. This is his second year in a row for being selected top cop. Patrolman McCarthy has been a member of the police department since 2008 and has served in the patrol division during the entirety of that time. He is a recipient of several command citations as well as several supervisory commendations. He also serves as the department field training officer. This is his second time also being selected as top cop, having previously been selected in 2015. So we wanted to say congratulations to them both, and you can read more about them in the upcoming evenings this Friday. Just a very quick update on the Route 206 bypass. As we had stated, the work will be um, resuming, and it is on Route 206. You can see down by South, uh, by Somerville Road, Old Somerville Road. You can see some of the equipment out there that is where they are starting to begin the clearing of the roadway. So, just a note that if you see that, that is what's going on there at this time. As always, you can stay connected with us at all events and more via Friday e newsletter and Twitter, TV29, and Hillsborough YouTube channels showcase our meetings, as well as Hillsborough The Good Life episodes. <coughs> and sign up for Swift Reach 911 if you have not for traffic and emergency notifications. And that's it for me this evening. So we will be moving on to our proclamations tonight. And we ask that after you receive your recognition, to please be seated, and then we'll allow some time for your departure after all of them have been recognized. 
First this evening, I just wanted to say we are recognizing the South Branch Reformed Church for its 168 years of being in Hillsboro. And I know Steve Eckert has not been around that long, but he is here tonight. We wanted to recognize the church established in 1850, continues to flourish and grow, and offers multiple services such as youth groups, fellowship clubs, Bible studies, pre-school services, and more. With its involvement with youth and dedication to the community, the South Branch Reformed Church continues to be a vital spiritual center for Hillsboro. I call Pastor Steve Eckert to come forward for this recognition tonight. So Steve and I have seen each other around from time to time, and um, we, have, we have recognized many businesses in town. And when he noted to me one time that he was been around for 168 years, I thought it was worthy of recognizing. So <laughs> thank you for being there and all your service that you do for this very deep and the township of Hillsboro. I want to recognize you. No, you don't ever give a pass for a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And next would be Robin Becker. Robin Becker, a speech therapist at Amsterdam Elementary, has been named Educational Services Professional of the Year for 2018. Ms. Becker has been a member of the Hillsborough School District since 2006 and has demonstrated tremendous dedication and service to the community. In 2016, Robin Becker completed her doctorate in speech language pathology, focusing on enhancing learning outcomes in early literacy via collaboration between teachers and speech language pathologists. She also recently completed an advanced certification program in school supervision and is an adjunct faculty member in the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders at Montclair State University. The Hillsborough Township Committee commends Robin Becker for being recognized as Amsterdam's Elementary School's Educational Services Professional of the Year, and we thank her for her hard work and dedication to the youth of Hillsborough. Congratulations. Christina Smith. Christina Smith, a special education teacher at Amsterdam Elementary School, has been named Teacher of the Year for 2018. She has been a member of the Hillsborough School District for 23 years and has demonstrated tremendous dedication and service to the district. Christina Smith is a co-founder of Field Day at Amsterdam Elementary School, which is now in its 20th year. She consistently delivers meaningful, differentiated instruction to meet the needs of her students. Christina is keenly aware of each student's individuality as well as their unique gifts and talents. The Hillsborough Township Committee commends Christina Smith for being recognized as Amsterdam Elementary School's Teacher of the Year we thank her for all of her hard work and dedication to the youth of Hillsborough. Congratulations.
American Red Cross. American Red Cross Month is a special time to recognize our everyday heroes and thank those who contribute to the mission of the Red Cross. Whether through time, money, or blood, all are encouraged to support the Red Cross in helping people in need down the street, across the country, or around the world. The American Red Cross provides 24-hour support to members of the military, veterans and their families, training in CPR, aquatic safety, first aid to millions, and collects about 40% of the nation's blood supply. Last year, the American Red Cross experienced a record-breaking year filled with challenging domestic and international response efforts. In Hillsborough, the Red Cross works tirelessly through its employees and many volunteers to support the township when disaster strikes, when someone needs life-saving blood or the comfort of a helping hand. The members of the Hillsborough Township Committee, in conjunction with the President of the United States of America, do hereby declare March as American Red Cross Month. We encourage all Americans to support this organization and its noble humanitarian mission. Thank you for being here tonight. I just want to thank the mayor and the, uh, the Township Committee for recognizing the Red Cross this month. This is uh, the, the focus of the Red Cross is certainly uh, felt here in the Somerset County area and in Hillsborough. We have many volunteers that give their time for the organization. Uh, myself as a former uh, resident of Hillsborough, uh, but still in Somerset County, a uh, volunteer on the board along with uh, Commissioner Tsurugi, and uh, we really appreciate the recognition. Um, but the organization is always looking for volunteers and uh, donations to continue to do the, the life-saving work that the organization does, as well as supporting services to our armed forces in many capacities, including the VA, which is, is really important to me personally. So, uh, tomorrow is actually Red Cross Giving Day, so we'd encourage folks, if you can, uh, in a spare few moments, check out the redcross.org website, and if you're able, uh, make a donation to the, uh, to the Red Cross. Thank you very much. And National Nutrition Month Awareness. Oh, yeah, there you are. <laughs> the recognition of National Nutrition Awareness started in 1973 as National Nutrition Week. And as popularity grew, National Nutrition Month was established in 1980. The theme for 2018's National Nutrition Month is Go Further with Food. There is a need for continuing nutrition education and to encourage a wide-scale effort to enhance good eating practices. National Nutrition Month, a nutrition education and information campaign sponsored annually by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, helps spread the word about the importance of a healthy diet and regular exercise. The members of the Hillsborough Township Committee, in conjunction with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and ShopRite of Hillsborough, to hereby declare March as National Nutrition Month. We encourage all Hillsborough residents to join the campaign and become concerned about their nutrition and the nutrition of others in the hope of achieving optimum health for today and tomorrow. Thank you for being here as always. I know you do a great job over at ShopRite. And, uh, Thank you very much to the mayor and the township committee. Um, I just wanted to say that I actually have a perfect example. I was in the schools the last week for Wellness Week and I gave presentations during the lunch periods and I was talking to some of the kids and they are so smart and so well educated on nutrition in this town. It's truly amazing. And being able to just provide them with a little bit more in-depth education is amazing, even at the younger elementary schools. So it, it really is a great thing. Um, I do have some LaCroix in the back if anybody wants, if anybody wants a drink. <laughs> anybody's thirsty um, and I just want to remind everyone that ShopRite's nutrition services are free so whether you guys want to come in and sit down for a counseling session if you need help shopping I'm there for you my doors always open um, you can always call me or send me an email so thank you very much
That's the end of our proclamations this evening. So at this time, if you would like to take a few minutes, I will have a pause to, uh, if you'd like to exit. If not, stay and join us, please. Thank you. We're opening back up to the meeting now. Moving on to new business, there is none at this time. So we'll be moving on to public comment on new business and matters that are not on the agenda this evening. Anybody have any comments? Come up to the microphone. Nope. Okay. And state your name and address on matters not on the agenda. Oh. <laughs> state your name and address, please, for the record. My name is Jean. So, I, Mayor, if you don't mind, I can talk about one of them because I had a conversation with where they had placed one of their fire hydrants, and I know that was an open permit from them. They were in a all American. The company was in a dispute with American Water about the location of a fire hydrant, uh, and I guess there's some New Jersey code where if a fire hydrant is so many feet away from a road, it's got to have an open access point. I, I'm not 100% familiar, but they, the company was not fighting, but in a long dispute with the water company. And I know that really held up the permitting process regarding that. Um, I'm sure the mayor can uh, reach out to our department head to get a update, John Feeler, our construction official, of where it's at now. But I know that held up the project for a while as the two were going back and forth, basically, again, between the company and between the water company about where this fire hydrant had to go and whether or not there had to be another so like another access point, uh, whether it had to be attached to the building for the water. It was, um, I forget the exact term, but I know that was holding up the process a lot. And that was between the company and the two companies, but I I'm sure we can get you I a direct another update. I them over at All American this week, and they said everything is complete, but they still say the township is holding it up. Uh, and I, I believe that they I said that. I bring my husband back here. And I, no, I believe they said that, but I know that the part of the open permit was where the fire hydrant was located, and that was a dispute by the water company. And there was something where we couldn't close on that permit until that was worked out. Because I had a whole conversation with uh, a representative from American Water on another matter, and they brought this to my attention, and I had reached out to our construction official, John Fiedler, on that. I don't know if that's what's still holding it up, but I know that was a major part of the problem. And again, that was between the water company and the actual owners of All American. So we can look into it, but I, I know that was part of the problem and what delayed the process for a while. This has been going on and on and on. Since well, quite honestly, ma'am, it's the first I've heard of it, and I don't think anybody from our building department has even acknowledged it. Um, this is the first we're all hearing of it. So we will reach out to John Fiedler tomorrow, who is the building um, uh, department head, and find out exactly what it is. Can you leave your name and number yes, with Sides. our clerk so we can call you tomorrow? and find out exactly where it is, because the first we're hearing about it. Okay, we would, we would love to have your husband back home too. So we'll find out what, what's holding it up. Okay, thank you. I'm just gonna ask you guys to hang on one second, okay? Just so I can get her number. <coughs> Okay, Pam? Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. Susan Tracy, 50 Thornton Street. Sorry, it's prepared. But That's okay. My husband, John, has Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Many years of caring for him at home has taken a significant toll on my health. Last summer, I made the difficult decision to look into assisted living for him. I put a deposit at All American in June with the expectation we would be open in September. John fell and broke his hip in December, which necessitated putting him into, an assist, into a, another facility. Do any of you have any idea what the cost is per day at these facilities? Do you? $350 a day. All American offers a much more reasonable solution. I actually called the mayor's office on Friday morning and an administrative assistant called the building department for me and called me back and told me they're going through the normal permit processing every time they get a call, they are there to do the permit. But this has been, again, this has been going on since I was told September would be the opening. September? Okay. Again, Anything that you can do. I to promise help. you we will look into it. I, it again, are, it's the first I have heard about it. There are 80 so. families waiting to put their loved ones there. And they said the opening date would be September? That was year. what I was told when my deposit was put in in June. Okay. M may I ask, since we have two individuals who came out tonight, did the company ask you to? No. Attend? It's just a. No. no, the other day I'm I I just called, curious because it's, no. it's coincidence. The other day I called All American and uh, after I hung up with them, after hearing, I've, every month I've called, or more frequently, and all, all I ever hear is permits, permits, mm -hmm. the township is holding yeah, us it's up. It's common for that answer, but there's something Kathy else that has to be to holding be, it up. She delivers the mail in my neighborhood. Okay. Her husband is going there as well. Okay. Um, so together we talked and we decided maybe it's time to go to the town council meeting. I did talk to the director on yesterday morning told her that we planned on coming and told her to share with anyone who's calling frustrated with waiting to please let them know that some of two of us were at least planning to go and i think maybe she got the message out so but again on behalf of myself and the 80 other families who anxiously await the opening and this facility is so much closer to my home as yeah. well okay so. Not a problem. We will follow up with you as well. Would you mind leaving your number again with Pam so we can call you tomorrow? Hold on. Just if we can write down your name. You got to give us one second so we can get your name as well. Mayor, let the record reflect that at 806, Administrator for our agenda meeting. Okay, thank you for joining us. Sorry. Hi, my name is Kathy Mangini, and I live at 67 Fleming Drive. I'm not going to say everything they said. The only thing I'd like to say is that when we're budgeting for, for living and retirement and all this sort of thing in our, you know, our, our health insurance, we can do all that we can, but when our loved ones are in a place like Foothill or Avalon that's ten to twelve thousand dollars a month. Our savings and our long term health care can deplete really quick, which puts the other person in the marriage at risk for not having money for themselves. So again, anything you guys can do on our behalf, you know, and it's yeah. definitely not the facility, it's our bank accounts that are shouting, Go to the township meeting, you know. So thank you. Thank you. Mayor, can I just make one quick comment? Sure. I, I think when uh, doing this for the number of years now, the, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, a lot of times we, we hear where businesses will go out to members of the public and said, oh, we tried to open, but, you know, we couldn't get this permit. And then you find out that they didn't get a permit because they didn't do X, Y, and Z correctly by state law. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really what, you know, the permitting process is for, is to make sure that things are done correctly so that when your loved ones are in these facilities, that they're going to be safe, too. We don't want shoddy work, whether it be electrical, plumbing, or what have you. So th there is a middle ground in there. You know, we, we obviously want it to open as quick as possible, but we want it to be as safe 
forever for your families too. So, but, that uh, but that's why we, we're we're going to go back and do our due diligence. But I, I do know that you know watching a number of businesses open up in town, it's usually somewhere in the middle. Is you know what the situation is is you know the business didn't do something right as they were trying to open. Um, happens a lot too. So, again, we're going to do our due diligence and we'll follow up with you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other comments for business not on the agenda tonight? Thank you. We will absolutely follow up with that. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll be moving on to public hearings tonight. Uh, we have first public hearing is 2018-01. It's an ordinance authorizing a lease agreement with Apex Land Associates, LLC, for lease of an outdoor synthetic turf field to be constructed at the property identified on the tax map of the township as Block 175, Lot 23.01. This, or this ordinance authorizes a lease agreement with Apex for the construction, maintenance, and replacement of an outdoor synthetic turf field at the property. The agreement allows the Township's Recreation Department to utilize up to 400 hours of prime time and also uh, an addition on the turf field. In addition, the Hillsborough Youth Organizations to Hillsborough Township will receive priority scheduling and a 50% discount on that field rental. So, opening public hearing, may I have a motion to open the hearing? So move, Mayor. Thank Second. you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Is there any discussion from the days? So, Mayor, from um, a recreation standpoint, I know we've talked about it uh, many times, we've undertaken a number of different options to look at how we can uh, increase the amount of space we have in town for our recreation programs. Um, we had we thought we had the, a viable path a couple years ago and uh, that didn't quite work out. Um, but this arrangement that we've uh, been able to work with Apex, when you look at uh, similar towns of size, uh, when you look at the amenities and facilities that they have, um, turf fields are something that really are valuable within the town. Uh, from a maintenance perspective, from a, the, the ability to use them year-round, multiple times throughout the day. We do have fields in town that can use for uh, some of our football and lacrosse and soccer programs, but the reality is there's only so much they can be used because of their grass fields and they do need to be maintained and they need to rest a bit so the grass can uh, ensure it takes. Uh, this program is one that, uh, with the ability to use these turf fields, is really something that will be uh, extremely beneficial to our recreation programs and some of our uh, other youth organizations in town. And uh, I, I think it's uh, something for uh, for the town's benefit that will be you know, uh, extremely well received within the community and something that is uh, very much needed. Okay, any other discussion? No, okay, moving to the floor. Any discussion from the floor on this ordinance for the lease agreement? State your name and address for the record. Erin Morris, 23 Belief Drive. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak with you this evening. As a resident of Hillsborough and a parent, I'm thrilled about the multi-sport and recreational activities that Apex Sports and Events will offer to the community of Hillsborough. As a parent of four children, I'm excited about the various opportunities that Apex will provide my children for recreational activities and having a place in town for them to socialize with friends in a safe, active, and energetic environment. I would also like to express a big thank you to the Hillsboro elected officials for identifying the need in Hillsboro to offer its youth an alternative recreational experience and for working diligently with Apex to make it happen. As the founder and president of Gigi's Playhouse Hillsboro Down, Down Syndrome Achievement Center, my excitement and eagerness for Apex sports and events to come to Hillsboro comes from a different place. Gigi's Playhouse Hillsboro is thrilled to be launching our Gigi University program. GGU is a comprehensive and progressive learning program for adults, tailored specifically for adults with Down syndrome. It is comprised of a 15 what 15-week instructional program designed to motivate adults with Down syndrome to achieve their highest potential in the real world while developing their abilities in the areas of wellness, communication, and career skills with an emphasis on job interviewing, communication skills, money management, public speaking, 
customer service, computer skills, team building, and wellness. But where I get really excited is the opportunity for GGU graduates, adults with Down syndrome, to gain meaningful internship opportunities through our partnership with Apex Sports and Events. Individuals with Down syndrome are capable of so much, and we're thrilled that Apex Sports and Events and the Wilkie family recognize these capabilities and are eager to provide our graduates with the opportunity to hone their skills so that they can gain meaningful employment opportunities out in the Hillsborough community. Individuals with special needs are eager and ready to be active members of the working class. For us to have a venue in Hillsborough that is equally as eager and ready to support and showcase these talents and capabilities of individuals with special needs by providing them with truly meaningful employment opportunities. Apex Sports and Events will take Hillsborough to the next level as a leader in the movement to, tr to create a truly inclusive society. As an advocate for the special needs community and a parent, I encourage the planning committee and the greater Hillsborough community to support the development of this tremendous resource. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Appreciate it. Any further comment? Hi. Hi. How are you? My name is Doug Schaff. I live at 79 Oxford Place. I'm going to take a contrary view. Um, right now, with the uh, GSA properties being remediated behind our homes, um, all those trees were cut down. Mm -hmm. And since last year, we now get all the lights from the uh, county ball fields. Um, now we're looking to put another facility near them. We're talking about more lights that are coming into our home, um, plus a big white um, dome. So uh, obviously I'm expressing a contrary view. I guess I'm looking for some guidance on um, what our um, um, options are as homeowners in, in, in that area. Okay, just to state a quick thing, uh, all the Township Committee has been involved with this project and the clearing. We've been updated, I think, almost on a monthly basis from the GSA and the construction going on, on over there. So I've seen it firsthand, so thank you for your patience. A lot of the trees were cut down and um, the land was being cleaned up because it was, it was bad dirt and the trees needed to be replaced as well. So the trees will be replanted. I'm not quite sure what level they'll be replanted, but they will be back there um, and growing. Hopefully. I understand that piece of it, but by the time those trees grow, it'll be 20 years. Yeah, I don't know the maturity of the trees they're planting. Right. I should so, follow so for you. You have all those lights yeah. still coming in, mm -hmm. and now we're talking about potentially having more ball fields out there, um, have lights coming into our, into, into our homes. Um, and I think that's something that uh, is certainly warranted to bring up at the planning board hearing uh, regarding buffer, tree types, um, and the different lights that will be used. Uh, because unlike baseball fields, I know the lights that are being talked about for this project are usually more directional. Baseball, you have to have them go up, down, left, right, because that's just the way baseball lights are going. The lights but, that are out there come right in my bedroom window. I, yeah. When we're eating dinner at night, they come in our, our, our dining room uh, window. Um, I'm and, sorry, our, our kitchen window in the back. I'm sure the same with all of my, my fellow neighbors. Um, but it, again, that's something that absolutely planning board, something that should be discussed. You have two members of the Township Committee that do set on planning board. You have Committee in Sirachi and Committee in Delcor um, that will um, certainly take residents' concerns when they're making the decision. Because again, the, the project's not being built yet. And I think that's important. And I think that the mayor mentioned that. Said, no, the, <laughs> but the planning board process is really where that is discussed. This is more of the lease agreement, the nuts and bolts of what the township will get out of a agreement with Apex if it could ever get built. I mean, this is all moot if it doesn't make it through planning board. When is the next planning board meeting? So I believe, uh, I believe this is uh, tentatively scheduled for the first Thursday in April. I forget what the, whatever they date is. Next week, I believe. The 5th. So, first Thursday in April? Yes. Yeah. Thursday yes. In the same room. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Timothy Brown. I live at 34 Lawrence Court. I just had a question about implications for taxes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I received some information from the Hillsborough football team and it gave a lot of great information. It sounds like a great idea, by the way. Um, but it didn't indicate anything with regards to um, how much additional taxes that we may need to pay if we were to build it. So I'd be interested in, in understanding that. And then the second question is, 
Um, do we have any sense of how long it would take to build this facility? Well, this ordinance is just a lease agreement right now. We'll be getting into the, that in the next ordinance. Mm -hmm. If you want to hold that question for that time, we can answer that. Okay. Um, so, so at the next conversation, yeah, the next we'll, one we'll is coming up is more on the taxes the and tax yeah, we'll probably be as well program. as the time frame. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And so, uh, when will that conversation take place? Next. In five minutes. <laughs> oh, right after. This. Okay. About yeah. two minutes. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> sir, I'll get back up in two sir, minutes. Yeah. Either that or I might answer it in advance. But yeah, you can, yeah, if I don't clarify something for you, yeah, come you back. Can just respond to that question when you go okay. over. That would be great. Fantastic. Right? Thank, great. You. Thank you. Sir, Thank sir. You. And again, with yeah. the build out, would be basically, uh, would, would depend on what happens at the planning board hearing. So, um, mm -hmm. so that will really be determined by that, at that point. Yeah, and so we don't have any sense if it'll take 10 years, five years. Uh, I, well, I, I don't think it'll take 10 years. So okay. Uh, All right. Awesome. And I, I just have a question because I was confused about your statement. You indicated the taxes for uh, the township's not building this. This is a private developer who's building this. Okay. Uh, I didn't know if you under. So no, I didn't. I didn't. So that's kind of the essence. Yes. Yeah, right. So oh, okay. so there's going to be a private um, that's building yeah. it, and our lease agreement really will be kind of as well as the tax exemptions for them will enable them to um, build it and then potential profit rate. But we don't have to invest money as taxpayers in order to have it built. 100%. That's correct. Okay. So then you answered the question. Thank you for okay. that. Okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. It's, so, right. Awesome. Thank, thank you for helping you. me understand that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Bill, for helping me understand that. <laughs> thank you. Any further comment on this ordinance? Did you want to yeah, come up? Yeah, here. Okay. Sorry. Hi. My name is Shana Pepin. I live at 47 Oxford Place. Um, so I'm within 200 feet of the build. So I was just curious, we're talking about lease. Are there other locations under consideration still for this plan, or is this the only land currently under consideration? As far as I know, for the Apex land, it's, it's yeah, this is the only one that we're involved in. And if this lease agreement were to not go forward in the board, what then uh, then the proposal would have to start from scratch, basically, because this is we have to we have to take this in steps, and these are the first ordinances to move forward for it to move to the planning board, and et cetera. Mayor, if I may, even if we didn't execute a lease agreement, I don't know that Apex wouldn't still can try to yeah. build on that property. I don't okay. believe that we're it, contingent upon it. If we didn't approve this, I don't know that he still or that the property wouldn't try to still build it. Okay. It's just so this, yeah. There's, there's two paths here. You've got a sort of private enterprise that's looking to, to build on the on the property. It's not the township building on it. It's sure. a private entity. So uh, really, whether there's any other consideration would really be to the applicant. But we don't believe that to be the case. But okay. that's really a question for them. But secondly, is is as Commissioner Thompson noted, whether or not we execute a lease agreement uh, is really up to the business how they would want to proceed with that. From our perspective, from the benefit of the township, it's really a, a situation where we are trying to figure out how we can maximize our, our usage of fields, which is what's driving the, the agreement to want to participate if it gets built, because we really need the access to the, to the field space. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I see you back there. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kurt Seidel, 12 White Manor Road, Hillsboro. Um, I just wanted to offer my strong support for this project. Um, I've coached um, youth baseball in this town for <coughs> over a decade, and I, I run a men's league team right now, so I'm very familiar with the, the aggravation of having to rent space and zoned in Hillsboro and uh, the Health Quest bubble and Flemington and going up to the Branchburg Sports Center. So I just think this would be a fantastic idea for our town. I'm just sorry that it came too late for me and my coaching days and my kids, but maybe. You know, as an adult team, we can still make use of the facility. I just think it's a great idea. Thank you. I'll go. You want to go first? Go ahead. Hi, Christine McAvoy, 142 Mountain View Road, across from the park. Um, I think this is a wonderful addition to Hillsboro from someone who has an athlete. Um, I'm looking forward to sending him across the street for everything that he has or ha ever has to do in life um, and future employment opportunities for him. 
But um, I also think that this would be a good time for perhaps the township committee to revisit um, what other people in town have come before this committee before to express um, about Hillsborough being so big, so large, and that's why we want to compete like other towns have these more uh, sports turf fields and things. They also seem to um, have more of a parks and rec control over sports in the town as it grew and grew and grew. Um, that might be something to look at at this point. They brought up lots of points in the, when they came before you that I saw on TV. I thought they were all valid. But from my perspective now, it seems like Apex is giving a lot of the time to township um, use of fields. And then other entities will be getting a uh, lease for a uh, discount and there are so many competing entities in this town for sports and other recreation activities, even like GG's, I never even thought about your, you know, your, your involvement, um, which is great, um, that maybe now it might be a time to envelop everybody into one parks and rec sports program. That's all. And I think that all sports programs in Hillsborough are wonderful, but it might be that we're just too big at this point to not be on an, an umbrella under a town rec. Committee. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Jay Scott, Taylor Avenue. Um, here on behalf of the Dukes, also the Hillsborough Dukes, um, we're the longest running youth sports organization in town. Um, we are very much in favor of this, pro this project, and we want to thank the township for making such a program available to the town because we plan to make use of the APEX facility. Um, as Christine and many others said, a lot of larger towns have the ability to have these big complexes and, and some of these towns foot the bill. And we're in a situation now where the township, the taxpayer doesn't have to foot the big bill and we get to have a piece of it. So we are very much in favor of all this and look forward to having the lease program forward. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Keep in mind that public comment would be on this ordinance so far. Hi. Hi. I'm John Anderson. I'm 49 Oxford Place. Um, I'm just concerned about property values, really. Uh, I'm adjacent to this property. Uh, I think, do they have to do a property value evaluation or a study to determine whether our property values will go up, down, anything? Is that part of uh, the... I don't believe that's part of the municipal land use law at this time. So there won't be any of that? No, that's not something that's... Uh, Anybody consider. have an opinion? No opinions. I mean, it's a, it, it really it cuts... I mean, this is just my personal opinion, and I don't know if any members of the township committee have it, but, I mean, it was contaminated land, and it's getting cleaned up. That. So that's like step one, right? Like, the land is no longer contaminated, so that's an increase to property value. I don't know that this would necessarily increase or decrease. It, it, there's a lot of factors. And again, I think that's things to discuss with the owners of the property about, you know, doing mitigation to make sure that you're less likely to see the bubble, you know, or, or the, the dome and how high the dome actually goes. I think that's all good yeah, conversations kind of, to have. I did hear some of that information, but um, will we be, uh, be able to get a map or anything like that? Uh, or the, the owners or adjacent to these properties? Yeah, at the planning board meeting next Thursday, uh, next Thursday at the planning board meeting, I believe they might be able to put some of those the and maps up, and they'll go into more detail on that, where it's located, how far it sits back, yeah. and, and all the details I know Oxford's worried about, because I received several e emails from the community. So. And if you're within that 200, you, you get uh, you get noticed directly, but even if not, it's, it's right. within that, uh, it's going to be next Thursday would be the hearing. And a lot of those mapping and setbacks and, and right. sight lines and all that will be discussed really at that. Including point. building placements and field placements. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, the, and full, the full site plan map would be would be available at that point. And um, I know currently it's on display for, upon request at our uh, planning department that you can go in and take a look at the maps. And I know several mm -hmm. residents have gone in already and have viewed it. So Where's that? Right down the hall. <laughs> it's uh, what 830 to 430 and it's also 8 to 430 we're happy to eight. share anything with you there 8 to 430 eight to four. Okay. thank you very much you're welcome <clears throat> Hi, my name is uh, Jory Gallagher.
from the Fox Chase Run. Um, I, my son plays baseball, so we're a huge advocate of this happening. My husband's a coach, he is. But on another level, um, my girls aren't really involved in so much team sports, and there's going to be a rock climbing mm -hmm. area, and that's so huge for kids who just are not part of a team, per se, or just aren't team kids. Like today, I drove for 40 minutes to Hamilton to go rock climbing for an hour, and drove her back. Um, so I think that for kids who maybe are in can't do sports or don't <coughs> want to be part of a team, there's other things for them to do, other places for them to go and to you know, feel confident in themselves and uh, have fun. So that's another aspect of it. I think that's great. Thank you. Good point. Gotta get up quick. I'm all night here, Susan. Come on. You know how this goes. <laughs> Good evening, Dominic Massey, 5 Amsterdam Drive. Um, as a former coach of the boys' youth lacrosse program and a current coach of my last year of the girls' youth lacrosse program, I see a lot of my fellow volunteers in the audience that have coached with me through the years. Um, a lot of good points brought up, the gentleman from the Dukes, so on and so forth, but I want to, to thank the committee again and bring out another point that in our, in our coaching community, in our respective sports, we know people from neighboring towns. And they're driving as far, our neighbors in Montgomery are, are going up to uh, Next Level, I believe, the old, old uh, power time that we used to use for our programs. So we have our own neighbors that can also come in, which will benefit other local businesses, such as eateries, as they bring it in. So as they come in to, to visit for games and, and events. So I just think that overall it's, it's a great, great facility for both the town and our neighbors and our merchants that will bring in additional business to that. Thank you. Harry oh. Susan. <laughs> Susan Gullo, Fort Hunt Club Road. Um, I have a couple of questions on the ordinances. Particularly, I've gone over to page two. Well, we're still on public hearing 2018-01, so uh, stick to the questions. Yes, yeah, 01. We're, I know we're Got back it. to the ordinance here. <laughs> still <laughs> um, on the ordinances. On page two, the third whereas, uh, we're going to refer to the um, agreement for the purchase and sale between the Somerset County Improvement Authority and Apex. Um, you have, do we offhand, is the agreement available here in Hillsborough, or would you have to go up to Somerset County to one of their offices to view it. Agreement for the land sale? The agreement, the purchase, uh, agreement for the purchase and sale of real property. Um, I actually do have a copy of that, but the county also has a copy. Planning board? Uh, I have a copy of my possession, um, so. Is it on? We, we have a copy. Mr. Willard can share it with me, and I'll be happy to share it with you. Yeah. Tomorrow. Oh, yeah, no, thank you. You can submit an open price to us or the county, and you can get it either way. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, paragraph, whereas number four, um, contingent. Page? <laughs> First page or the second page? Second page. Okay. Contingent upon Apex being named by the township as redeveloper of the property. Um, I know there are several sports complexes in the area I've heard about recently. Uh, I guess there's one in Branchburg. There's a, is it Bridgewater Sports something? One out in South Plainfield, in the middle of an industrial park. There are others that have been developed. Um, I was wondering, had any other developers approached us that already have experience and or applied or shown any interest in this once it was determined that a sports complex, there was interest from the township in placing a sports complex there? It's county-owned property, Susan, so honestly, I directed toward the county. They had so I would have to ask the county? Okay. Um, Number five, the <laughs> whereas. Um, they talk about the synthetic turf fields, one being designated as a township turf field. I just wanted to check. I thought I understood that was the township had 400 hours annually. It was not our field, so to speak. It was owned by the corporation, Apex. Yes, That's it's right. owned by Apex. And we will have the use of 400 hours for our teams and the private teams, so to speak, the 501c3s like Gigi's, will have it at a cut rate. Okay, I was wondering because I didn't see it in here, 
And I thought I remembered hearing that at another hearing. That is correct. And from when you say did state are you earlier. talking about the ordinance in itself? In this ordinance, yes. <coughs> the lease agreement. No, in the ordinance. Okay, because the lease agreement authorizes the execution of the lease agreement, and it is the lease agreement. Okay, so the lease agreement is considered part of this ordinance or not? Well, the, no, the, the ordinance authorizes execution of, of the, the lease of the agreement. To Okay. Authorize the execution of this document, which is the lease agreement. Okay. Which you can also get a copy of. You can get a copy of the lease agreement. No problem. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else for this ordinance tonight? Yeah, I heard we have the permit. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Kevin Sweeney. I'm at 74 Oxford Place. And like my neighbor, I do share the difference of the demolition of every shrub and tree that was there, the ball fields that came in. Um, but when you go down to the ball fields, you realize they, they are set back quite quite a ways deep. Um, I know you survived Willow Road, where they put the fields in there, and everybody had an issue with that. And over time, it became a function rather than a liability. But I think two things that I've known, because I've been in town as you know, with business and stuff for over 30 years, that there's always been a complaint that you don't have certain goods and services in town. But then there's a resistance any time we come up with a new and novel idea that's a benefit and a dream to the town. And I think this is one of those cases where sure it impacts people that are close by, and, and I understand the difficulty of it. But in, in, the, in the greater being of, of the communities, what got us to be one of those best places in America, it's things like this that contribute that and make that. But I think even a more important part, we talk about a lot of different things, but we don't talk about is the people that are looking to develop this. And it's uh, with Greg Wilkie and family, you have some of the, the finest, highest integrity people that I've met within the community. And to partner with them is certainly a, a, a real opportunity for the community to have a, a great organization, bring an opportunity, as, as some others have stated here, to bring all these families in, all these activities, and bring them out of other potential things that could be much more negative going on in the community, and roll it back into an area where they can all share a, a real positive experience that we've known for, and I think that we've done, and it's all of you up here dedicate our lives to make sure that happens. So um, I just wanted to um, express my opinion and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Appreciate it. All right, I think that's it for comments on this ordinance so far. Anybody else? Raise your hand. All right, I see no hands, just in case. Okay. Thank you for all the comments this evening. And um, at this moment, to move on, we will have a motion to close the public hearing and adopt the ordinance 2018-01. So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Committee Ms. Burchette. Yes. Committee Ms. Delcor. Yes. Committee Ms. Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes, thank you. Now we're moving on to 2018-02. This ordinance is authorizing the uh, execution of a five-year tax exemption and abatement agreement with Apex Land Associates, LLC, for the redevelopment of the property identified on the tax map of the township as Block 175, Lot 23.01. This authorizes the financial agreement between the township and Apex for this area in need of redevelopment. This property is currently county-owned land. As a result, is not currently erratable. At closing of title, Apex will be responsible for the tax obligation on the value of the land. The abatement clause here only applies to the value of the improvements for the property for the next for the five years. So may I have a motion to open the public hearing on Ordinance 2018-02? Move to open. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any second? Any second? Oh, yeah. Committee Member Shep. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion up front from the dais? I'd like to hear what the public has to say first. Okay. Any comments, further comments from the floor? Susan. <laughs> Run. Okay. 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 Susan Gullen, Ford Hunt Club Road. Um, my first question is the uh, ordinance. To. Um, do we have any actual amounts on what the five-year exemption is? I've, I've been trying to figure it out. I saw that somebody at one point had said there's so much on the unapproved land and so much once the improvements and it's a certain percentage per year over the five years. There's certain, I guess, state of New Jersey and JSA laws that also apply to this. Is there any 
figures we can look at. Now, how do you determine that this is good financially? Aside from the fact that the county owns it now, we're not getting anything, so. So anything above zero is good. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, clearly, um, right now it's county-owned property, and we right. don't take any taxes in at this point in time. Once there's a changing of title, uh, the next owner, or if, it, if it is Apex at that point, that closes on the property, that we will start receiving taxes on the value of the land. And in any situation, even if you're a new developer with housing, you don't start paying taxes or determine the taxes until the facility is built and then it's assessed at that time. So it's not really clear to me anyway right now what the actual value of the building would be, but they'll be paying taxes first on the actual land. But, but Mayor, yeah. if I could, I think uh, what Susan's asking, just I think, is you are <coughs> going to say, how can we decide this is a good deal for yeah, the township? A comparison. Other so, towns have similar facilities. Other yeah, there, we, we have okay. some way. Well, I guess I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, no, please. You're good. Um, I, we obviously have qualified tax professionals in this town that do uh, tax assessments, and they would give us an idea of what, on paper, this facility would be uh, taxed at. Uh, so when we look at those numbers, we can base it on whether or not it's beneficial for the township to enter into some sort of agreement that would allow us to either build these fields on our own, or if it's more advantageous for it to work with a group, a private, public-private partnership. And I think that's what's really key here in a world where we have a 2% property tax cap. And we've done a great job as a township committee never exceeding that cap or taking advantage of any of the exemptions that are allowed in there. Building fields, a turf field, is simply impossible under the current structure with the state. It's just not going to happen. So when you see something like this come along, you have an opportunity to build and you know that the rateable is going to be so much less, doing exemption is so much less than us paying a hundred thousand plus a year to build a turf field, you know, if we bond it over ten years. Uh, that's how we determine whether or not it's, it's worthwhile. So there, there are numbers, we, we've seen some numbers, and I think Mr. Willard you just mentioned what's um, going to go. Obviously, was going for it depends upon the assessed value of the property and the tax rate. Um, the estimate that we got based upon the calculations uh, what, the, what the project's going to be, because I think at the end of the project, we're estimating the value to be approximately $15 million when it's all completed. Um, so over the course of the abatement, the abatement will work out to be approximately $700,000, um, which is obviously substantially less than it would cost the township to build a turf field. Um, I believe the engineer gave an estimate in 2016 that would probably cost in excess of $1.6 million to build this type of field on public field property. So, um, so, so to answer your question, <laughs> right. so to answer your question, there's certain variables, but the estimates that we made and we got from the tax assessor, we're estimating the value of the abatement to be approximately seven hundred thousand. But remember, the total five years uh, over the five years. Oh, and, okay. now, and remember, from day one, when they close title on this property, that land is going to be fully taxable. Right now, the municipality gets no taxes from that land because it's county owned. Once the facility is constructed. The improvements for the first year will not be taxed, but the second year, it's a graduating phase. They'll pay uh, taxes on 20% of the value of the improvements, then 40%, 80%, and then after the five years, they'll pay 100% of taxes. So, in five years from the date of this project, you're going to get a very good rateable for the municipality of approximately $15 million. So, can I yes. just add one? Maybe. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I just wanted to add one thing. It's two fields, really. Um, this is a 20-year agreement, and although it's one field that we get, these have to get replaced every 10 years or so, and as we know, we just went through this with the high school. Well, as part of the agreement, this, this field's going to have to get replaced within that 20-year lifespan. So we're getting two fields for this 700000 in abatement, which takes that 1.6 number, in, in my estimation, increases it, and along with, as Susan, you just mentioned, the maintenance, probably a additional staff person, which uh, a new uh, person parks the record there, I mean, that's $100,000 after their employment and then plus benefits and everything else uh, that comes along with it. So, I mean, just taking that over a 20-year period, saving 100000 a year on an employee, that's all things that we factored in when deciding whether or not this is a good lease to get into and whether or not a tax exemption or abatement is good. Which in this tax abatement is a lot less than you hear about in other municipalities that go for 30 years and everything else. Take a look at Jersey City, Hoboken. The Newarks, New Brunswick, they give out 30-year tax abatements like it's candy. 
Uh, so hey, this, we have one. This, this, is a lot, <laughs> this is a lot different, and we're actually getting something in back for it where I can argue that those towns don't necessarily do that. Okay. The, the, uh, just one other thing, as, and I'll, I'll actually, for a little, it's actually more than two fields because it, the reality is we have sort of direct access to one, but the benefit to the community that we would otherwise build out is really two fields because they're building two multi, two turf fields plus a, a third grass field that will eventually be turf as well. Um, and the reality is for us to have that type of a, of a facility in town is really the cost of building essentially three fields, which is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five million dollars. Simply not doable, as, as Doug noted. You were within, just within discussing the, the three outdoor fields right now. Correct. So, okay. so when you look at what, from a township <clears throat> recreation and usage perspective, and the usage that the um, other youth organizations will have that we can't, we simply cannot have, we don't have the resources. You're talking to be about the 501c3s that they, they, would have it at a lesser cost. Well, not even the 501c3. It's simply the fact that you have opportunities for uh, other organizations to be able to use fields that, even if it's not the township use field, through the through the uh, the ability to rent the space for their practice time, for their evening uh, practicing games, for tournaments, uh, things that. We can't do. Okay, really you're talking about complex. private sports, private sports Correct, companies sure. that would use the fields if we were able to build them, and we simply, uh, under the cap, had no ability to do that. That's just uh, we there's there's not enough funds to be able to to live within that cap. Okay. <coughs> we went down that path many years ago. So you remember, Susan? Oh yes, I remember. <coughs> so that was what I was talking about. I said my our viable option before <laughs> it was something. Okay, um, I guess I'm kind of revisiting my previous question on 01 when Mr. Willard was pointing out that that was Somerset County, but page two, the fifth, whereas, it says the township determined, I just realized when you said this was a total like a $15 million rateable, this is a huge project, this is a big project, it's not some little company coming in and putting in a basketball court. So, the township has determined Apex possesses the proper qualifications and experience. Uh, I'm not aware of them having previous experience in this particular, except for Hillsborough Racquetball Club, which isn't quite in the same category. Um, again, where the township, this applies. Um, were any other developers with previous experience? Did anybody else step up and say we're interested? Or were we contacted at all that you're aware of? So, um, a couple things. There's multiple parts of that question, so I'll try to answer as best I can. Um, the, first of all, the, uh, the family that is involved here it clearly has um, some experience in, in uh, fitness and, and recreation program uh, through HRC Fitness. Uh, but secondly, uh, and they can certainly talk to how, they, uh, how, how their business plan is built, and that will be discussed at at the planning board, but obviously there are uh, people involved that have built similar uh, facilities and they, they can talk about that at that event. Mm -hmm. But certainly we were satisfied that uh, in the, with the experience and the resources that they had available to them, uh, had, had the ability to do what they, what they were going to do, said they're going to do, and something that uh, we think would be very successful. Okay. This is um, really considered a large positive project, and yet when we go down a few more whereases, um, I say there was, this is, O2 is as an incentive to them. Um, was this not considered a, in and of itself a positive project for them, that they had to have an incentive, or was it a financial problem like they're in? Well, I think I'm not sure you're referring to, honestly. Um, <coughs> As an incentive for Apex to construct the project. And I'm thinking, why did they need an incentive, I guess, is narrowing it down. Okay. So why did they need the, the tax exemption? Uh, so is that what we're to? Yes, the tax exemption. Um, well, I'm just reading the whereas, so I have the yeah. terminology. Uh, the last whereas. Well, I think it, it, it's an incentive in terms of we're getting 400 hours, and every 501c3 is getting a 50% break. I mean, that, the, the, the ability 
<clears throat> right, we're doing a tax abatement for them. And in exchange, essentially, we're getting $400. Yeah, I think you can you move your eye real quick. The it's like, but that's, that's the numbers. I don't know to tell you. Essentially. And just keep in mind, this is an area of redevelopment. This area still has to be cleaned, which he's taking on that responsibility to do as well. So the abatement applies to something that is an area of redevelopment also. Okay. Thank you. Just like to say, oh, sorry. I like, I like all the comments this lady said. Um, Could you just state your name? Jerry? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Jay Scott, Taylor Avenue. Um, again, it's coming from the Dukes. Last year we celebrated our 50th anniversary, so I have literally thousands of boys and girls who have graduated through my program. No, I'm not 50 years old, so obviously. But anyhow, um, there is a fields problem in this town. You know, we went through and we built all these baseball fields, but lacrosse is one of the largest growing sports in America. Um, we happen to be fo football and cheerleading. My son happens to play lacrosse also, and field usage space in this township is very difficult. It's difficult to find, um, and, and as you stated earlier, the, you know, the, the turf fields, they get trampled, they, they, they need time to rest, otherwise they get damaged. So this is a very positive thing all around, and the abatement is, um, if it helps this process go through, it's something that the township's going to benefit in the long run, the people of this community, and you know, as we say, one of the best places in America, we need to help make it that way and, you know, youth activities and this kind of thing is where that comes Actually, from. Actually, it's one of the rankings that to put us in that map. So, our youth are parks, our recreation facilities, and um, so a part of why we are ranked as such. So, right. thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Craig Jeremiah, Valmar Road, was from here, thank you for time. Um, I've been involved in baseball my life. I have three kids in this town right now. I've coached since we've for the past six years. I think it's something good for the town. I think it's beneficial. But you guys are hopefully working together with the impact, so I support that. Hopefully, this will pass just convenience alone, having three kids in three different spots. One at HRC, my two sons, I am taking out of town, out of other facilities in Bridgewater, in Middlesex, and I think this would be a benefit. I have had a cousin who grew up playing baseball. He's in his first year. You are playing baseball now, and he's driven up to these area facilities, and it would be great to give our youth an opportunity to play right here in our own backyard. So I think that definitely a benefit for the town, for residents, and for the people support as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Mark Caliguire. I've been in Montgomery Township, but I served as service of Canada Freedom, and I'm the liaison to the Parks Commission. Um, I was sitting here listening to the folks talking. First of all, the people who live near the facility, I have every confidence that the Township Committee and the Planning Board in Hillsborough will absolutely, you know, and Apex, will take their concerns into consideration. Obviously, if you live near it, you're concerned about the lights and, and the height. I, I'm, I'm really confident that will happen. The one thing I kept thinking as I was sitting there was, um, we, we've, the county's been involved with the township committee um, for many years. I sat through a lot of meetings with a lot of you folks um, talking about what we're going to do with the whole GSA property. So think about where we were when I got involved with this years ago with you all. Um, what are we going to do with this and how is this going to happen? And we've gone from a blighted, you know, contaminated property that is now a great county park Hopefully, a great resource for a lot of people in Hillsborough. It's been a great partnership with you all. And now, these other acres where it's still contaminated, and what we're going to end up with, what Hillsborough is going to end up with, in, you know, with the deal that we're putting together with you, with Apex, um, is a great indoor and outdoor facility for sports teams in, in Hillsborough. And so, I'm really happy to finally see this happen and finally see what was something that was a problem for many years now become a really great asset for Hillsborough. Um, so anyway, congratulations. Let's see if we can't make this happen. Uh, Greg Wilkie and Apex, good luck. And uh, a great participant. Thanks for your partnership. Appreciate it. Aaron Morris, 23 Billy. 
I just wanted to address the, the question about the incentive. And it goes back to the cost of doing business, right? I think that Hillsboro is really fortunate to have the Wilkie family and Apex Sports want to build in Hillsboro. And truth be told, they could have taken this project and this idea to any number one of any of the number of towns in the area. They'd be thrilled to have this type of resource. So I, I think the cost of doing business, you have to incentivize businesses to want to build in your town and to take on a project like this to get rid of this blight, to use your word, um, on our community and take on the cost of repairing the ground to be able to in turn bring this facility. I say incentivize them all you want. I want to get rid of that gross land and you know add to our community. So thank you. Thank you. Philomena Salili, and I live on 24 Reichbrook Road, and piggybacking on everything that I've heard here tonight, and speaking to the residents, and also what others have said, I lived through this in 1979, and that was when the Hillsborough Racquet Club was being built. So what I heard tonight, we experienced the, this, the inconvenience of the building, the increase in traffic, homes were being built at the same time, I have to reinforce in the consideration of this facility, the benefits that it brings to our youth is paramount. But don't forget who's doing it. The Van Cleef family who built the Hillsboro Racquetball Club is awesome. They worked with the residents. They did everything they could to make it easier for us. My house is the second house away from the Hillsboro Racquetball Club. The neighbor in front of me, they did their best to put up buffers, did not, in, you know, and it's, a, and it's a very nice looking facility, but if we can go back and reflect in 1979, and we look today and we see this dome, that was almost as large to us in 1979 as this facility is. Now, gradually throughout the years, they've added additions, they've come to us, we have gone to them, we've expressed concerns, and they've worked through it. And most recently, and I think most of us know, the facility is now adding on. They have been careful. They have been convenient. They have made the facility to be conforming to everything that's in the area. So if there's, and I heard all of these opportunities with taxes and exemptions and everything else, if someone else were to come in, other than the Van Cleef family, or Greg Wilkie, who I personally have had conversations with, and dealing with some of the traffic issues that could present, they are willing to do everything to support not only the residents of this town, but provide the facility in a very safe, modern manner. So I probably should have said that a little bit earlier, but I will say it again at the planning board, I can't think of anybody else who would come in and do for the town what they have done. And I give you a live living example, and that's the Hillsborough Racket Club. And my life experience with that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any further comment? James Burke, uh, 121 Mountain View Road. Um, I was born on Mountain View Road. Uh, my pops is here tonight. And uh, it used to be you had tractor trailers going up and down the road when the GSA depot was open. The traffic backed up almost to the end of the street. You know, and when this uh, apex opens up, and um, Mr. Wilkie explained a lot of it to me, and he's been like everyone said, he's a pillar in the community. Um, he cares about the youth of our town, you know, and uh, so some of these concerns, like uh, the clearing the dirt out, like he said, you know, trucks going up and down the street, it kind of reminded me when I was a kid. But uh, when this project gets done, I feel, uh, and the bypass gets finished, you know, it'll alleviate, you know, some of the problems. And, uh, you know, you're always gonna have 
complaints, you know, about the lights and stuff like that, and they're legitimate complaints, you know. But uh, I feel for the kids and, you know, with the drug issues today and places to go, and, you know, this is going to be, you know, epic for our town, you know, for our, our kids. And my kids are pretty much done with, with sports, but uh, 20 years coaching the Junior Raiders, and like the gentleman from the Duke said, you know, there's times where the weather's bad and we have to go to Branchburg, you know, to, to have a practice. So something like this, and I know Greg and his staff would be open like, to accommodating us even if, you know, it didn't fall out under the umbrella of the township. So I, I think it's an incredible idea. And, you know, I, I don't know if I'd want to put up with the aggravation of getting this thing off the ground, but if anyone could do it, it it's the Wilkie family and this group. So I think it's a, a, a tremendous asset for our community. Thank you, Thank Mr. Burke. Appreciate it. I'm sorry, I have one more thing. Okay. <laughs> I apologize because I should have mentioned this because it just happened two months ago. Uh, we had a situation where we had a very large tree in the house closest to my house. So it was the Hillsborough Racquetball Club, my neighbor, the large tree which half was on our property and half on theirs. The neighbor came over and asked us to participate in taking down the tree. Now that meant that they would have to have access from our property to go and take the tree down. So um, Tom and I, my husband and I, went out and we talked to the neighbor and it would interfere with our underground irrigation system. And we all know who put that in. Um, and it would have been very expensive. So we were out there and we were talking, and I, I would love to take credit for this idea, but I don't remember whose it was. Let's talk to the racquetball club and see if we can have access to the property of theirs that they own right across from ours. Went over, no problem. They gave us complete access to their property, no cost to our family less cost to the owner of the other property, and the tree is gone. So I have to say that just to reinforce what I had said earlier, and I promise that's it, no more. Yeah. Thank you. Any further comments? Okay, seeing none, may I have a motion to close the public hearing on this ordinance to 2018-2? So, second. Thank you, may I have a roll call, please? Mayor Rochette. Yes. Mayor Yes. Mayor Sarachi? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Thank you. There is an introduction of a new ordinance this evening. It's 2018 03. It's an ordinance appropriating certain monies held by the Township of Hillsborough County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, for the resurfacing of Beekman Lane, Phase 1, in the amount of $540,000 in and for the Township of Hillsborough. Further consideration of this ordinance and public hearing will be held on April 24th. 2018. Something you said, Mayor. I know. <laughs> 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 Was it something you said? <laughs> I'll pause for a quick section. <laughs> Second. certain monies held by the Township of Hillsborough, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey for the resurfacing of Beekman Lane Phase 1 in the amount of $540,000 in and for the Township of Hillsborough. For the consideration of this ordinance, a public hearing will be held on April 24, 2018. This allows for funding of the Beekman Lane Phase 1 project in conjunction with the $508,000 that we receive from a New Jersey DOT grant and the remaining $32,000 is from developer contributions. May I have a motion to introduce this ordinance? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor?
seeing none, roll call, please. Chair Bruchette? Yes. Mandel Court? Yes. Mr. Taraji? Yes. Governor Thompson? Yes. Yes. Ordinance 2018-04 is an ordinance amending the salary ordinance to include the position of police operations assistant and setting forth the salary. Further consideration of this ordinance in public hearing will be held on April 10th. 10th? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Two weeks and I have oh, sorry. Okay. April 10th, 2018. As stated, this ordinance simply sets forth the position and salary of the police operations assistant. May I have a motion to introduce this ordinance? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from days? Any comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Bruchette? Yes. Commissioner Delcourt? Yes. Ms. Rachi? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor Hill? Yes, thank you. Considerations this evening. Number one, resolution ratifying and confirming the hiring of Drew Capolongo for the Department of Public Works, the start date of March 14th, 2018, funded through the Clean Communities Grant. Each year through this grant, temporary employees are hired to assist with the efforts in the community. I want to say welcome to Drew, and may I have a motion to? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from this? Any comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Thompson. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Consideration number two, resolution authorizing Mazer Consulting PA to provide professional services associated with the preparation of design plans and technical specifications for Beekman Lane, phase one in the township of Hillsborough. The lump sum amount of $23,200, pursuant to Mazer's proposal dated March 6, 2018. This resolution authorizes the professional services related to the design plan related to this project. May I have a motion, please? Second. Any comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor? Roll call, please. Mayor Yes. Yes. Mayor Yes. Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Yes. Consideration number three is a resolution authorizing the hiring of Demo Mahalov as part-time building inspector for the Hillsborough Township Building Department, effective March 28, 2018, at the rate of $30 per hour, not to exceed 29 hours per week. There exists a vacancy currently in the position of the part-time building inspector, and this authorizes to fill that vacancy. Welcome to Demo, and may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the days? <laughs> Any comments from the floor? Okay. Roll call, please. Mayor Yes. Yes. Mayor Sarachi? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor Yes. Consideration number four, resolution approving the 20 2017 appropriation reserve <laughs> transfers to miscellaneous trust. This resolution takes the unexpended 2017 budget line items and transfers to a trust fund for use in future years. May I have a motion, please? Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? I'm just happy there's money to roll over. <laughs> that means that we did not, not have enough snowstorms after all. <laughs> Any comments from the floor? Roll call, please. Rochette? Yes. Ms. Elcourt? Yes. Ms. Rachi? Yes. Ms. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor McCall? Yes. And that's it for considerations this evening. Moving on to the consent agenda. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second, Mayor. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Mayor Thompson? Yes. Yes. Claims list this evening is 2018-06. May I have a motion to approve claims list? 2018-06. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor? Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Yes. This concludes our regular meeting tonight. We do have an executive session. Ms. Board, please read the resolution. We're at section 8 of the public meetings at chapter 231 public laws 1975. Permits the exclusion of public from the meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas the Township Committee is of the opinion that such circumstances exist now, therefore be resolved by the Township Committee of Township of Hillsborough County, Somerset City, New Jersey, No. 1, as follows. The public shall be excluded from the discussion of the hearing after specified subject matter. The general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is as follows Contract Negotiations, Board of Education. Number three. The 
Township Committee may take official action on those items discussed in the executive session upon the completion of the executive session. Number four, the minutes of those discussions shall be made available to the public as soon as the matters of the discussion are no longer in confidential or sensitive nature. And number five, this resolution will take effect immediately. Thank you, Ms. Gordon. I have a motion, please. Thank you. Any comments from the days? I wish I heard the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments from the floor? Roll call. Yes. 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 Thank you. We will now move into executive sessions.